Well, I, I, I guess I could start off by saying, um, you know, I, I kind of lean toward um, hanging on to, you know, the Bible and the Word, um, not for religious purposes, um, but because of what I see uh, prophetically, uh, historically, civilization-wise, people, places, and events. Um, it's undeniable. Yeah. And so it's, it's, a, it's my main reference guide. But as far as the myths, um, I like to start by saying uh, when, when we think of the word myth, uh, most people, uh, you know, turn off their brains. You don't really research it any further because myth means lie or myth, myth means fairy tale, uh, like yeah. I think I mentioned before. And um, there's a, a word, uh, mythos, which um, is synonymous with, with history. It doesn't mean lie. And so, um, you know, the more people uh, begin to become aware, the more they're going to start seeing these things uh, on television and commercials everywhere. They're just going to start seeing it. And um, one, of, one of the major ways that uh, you can see it is if you were to peel back the, uh, the layers of uh, our holidays. Um, I'm pretty sure, you, you know, many people out there have wondered about the origin of some of the things, um, like Santa Claus, you know. Um, well, well, that sounds like a perfect one to start off with. Um, uh, I, I know a few things, and to be honest, I, I do not advocate Santa Claus or, or teach that within my own family. So, uh, uh, what, what, what's your what's your thinking and, and ideas on that one? Well, I, I tell you, um, you know, if if you mention Santa as uh, anything other than a jolly. Uh, benevolent, uh, chubby man. Um, you know, it, it's going to cause a lot of uh, a lot of issues with a lot of people. Yeah. And um, you know, a lot of people are passionate about that. And I mentioned this in my book about how um, that's what they want. They want to steal your passions. And so, when you look at um, when you look at uh, Santa, if you scramble the, the the letters Santa, you get Satan. Now that could yeah. be coincidental. You could say that's coincidental. Uh, you could also say it's co coincidental that, uh, you know, he's wearing a red suit. That's coincidental. Um, but then we all know there's no coincidences. So Exactly, but it, 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 gets, it, gets, it, it gets worse. It gets worse. Um, now, as far as uh, his little helpers, if you look up uh, the word elf, uh, you get mm -hmm. mischievous, mischievous creature. So now, what, why, why does Santa need mischievous creatures to help him build toys for little kids? And so, if you look a little further, um, I know you know there are many people that uh, you know uh, subscribe to the the pagan religion, and that's fine. That's that's their choice, you know. But um, the pagans used to call the devil Old Nick. Well, what do we call what do we call Santa? Old Nicholas. Jolly old Saint Nick, and so it, it, that could be a coincidence, but maybe not. And it goes a little further. Um, in Scandinavia, there was a uh, like a, uh, a ritual um, with the Scandinavians in which they would build an altar and they would put a shim on top of their roof. Now this is you know years before America. Um, you know they they put a shim. We call it today a chimney. And this so, actually, years before Christianity, too, if you look at uh -huh. the word holiday, it's, you can break it down into a holy day. And ah, yes. Christian holidays actually go a lot further back. Than, uh, exactly, exactly. And these and are really the, just uh, pagan uh, holidays, correct? Right, and this is where, if you, if you look in the Old Testament, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, controversy about the Old Testament and why God would say, do not intermingle, do not intermarry, do not take their gods, uh, don't, you know, intermingle with the pagans and stuff like that. Um, there's a reason for it, and, and it's, it's, you know, if people are willing to embrace the, the truth or not, that, that's the bottom line. The truth, it hurts, it's difficult to embrace, but the truth is the truth. And so, well, back on topic, uh, as far as the, uh, the chim, you know, you, they would, they would uh, have a, uh, a sacrifice, you know, a goat or whatever, and they were sacrificed to a god that rode through the air on a sled pulled by, pulled by two goats named Nasher and Crasher. Hmm. Prancer, Dancer, Dasher, Donner. 
Does that sound familiar? Wow. Wow. So, okay. So, yes. So, yes. So, now it, it starts to come into focus a little bit more. And then when you consider who was riding on the the sled, it was the god Thor. Now, when I was young, um, Thor was a superhero with the super friends. Now, yeah. further study shows that Thor was in league with the devil himself. And so now if you also look further, you'll see that Thor is also the god of the Vikings. And they wore the horns and they rode in what? Dragon ships. Yeah. Who's the dragon? You know? And so wow. all of this, yeah, all of this, uh, so, you know, so comes. So basically you are look, we're pointing to, um, <coughs> oh, excuse me, uh, that these uh, ancient Scandinavians were, were truly uh, pagan idols and, and they, mm-hmm. they really praised these things. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, they, wow, they really. I did not they, know that. I thought they were just almost non denomination. They were just Viking pirates. I, I didn't well, know that they actually had beliefs like that. Um, respectfully, no. for what we're talking about and what you're saying, mm-hmm. Odin was the god and Thor was the son of Odin. Oh, mm-hmm. kind of okay. Similar to um, uh, the Jesus and God story. You know, people, Christians, they say, you know, Jesus was the son of God. Thor was the son of Odin. Just out of my right. research, that's what I've gotten. Mm-hmm. Well, no, that's that's true. Odin, exactly right. Isn't Odin uh, part of Greek mythology mm-hmm. also? Yeah, yeah, that's good, but now, but, but let me, let me, let me, if I, on that. Poseidon, well, well, in, uh, oh, yeah. okay, okay, and uh, Zeus was in uh, Roman, there we now, go, if, okay, if, if I, if I may add a little something about the, uh, the, um, the Odin Thor thing, um, yeah. that, that's exactly right, but now, if you, um, you know, the further you check and, and start, um, cross-referencing, you'll see there's a connection between Thor and the devil. And uh, this is why, you know, the horns and the Vikings had the horns and then they rode around in the dragon ships. Um, there's a connection. Wow. wow. Yeah, and so... This is, this is honestly so, I slept on, guys, so um, I'm, I'm really fascinated right now. Please keep going on. No, and there, there, there's more. Um, as far as, um, you know... Um, you know the little kids. This is this is what the focus is. The focus is on little kids. Um, this is why in the word, you know, uh, Jesus says you must become as little kids. There's a reason for that. And um, you know the the devil counterfeits everything that God has ever done. Um, so if God has a son, then of course you know you're going to see the same type of similarities uh, with you know demigods having sons and. Um, claiming to be benevolent and, you know, requiring worship and sacrifice this, and all this stuff. This Go ahead. Also what you takes say? place all over the world in a lot of cultures. Oh, yes. Uh, it's a mm-hmm. culture, the same type of story with the same type of stuff going on in reference the to same uh, deities the dragon, and... if, you, if you want to call them reptilians. And we can get real deep into that subject if you really want to. I oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh. I would say we I would say hey, listen. it there. Hey, listen, hey, hey, you know what? Um, I, I like the the format, and, um, you know, I, I've uh, structured myself in, in accordance to the format. So I, I, I'm ready. Once we get to that, that segment, boy, we, we can really take off with that. Um, I, I, uh, yeah, but um, I, I like to, um, you know, branch off into some more of the uh, – the holidays, um, oh, yes. you know, as, uh, as, Mel, as Mel called it, holy days. That's, that's so accurate. Um, well, you can break but, out uh, a lot of words like that. And it's, it's, it's strange how the, our system of speech is set up with certain words that uh, you can break down into certain things like history, you know, his story. But, yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. You're, that's right. His story. That's right. Um, yes, I, I'd definitely like to tackle some more of these, uh, these fairy tales and myths we were talking about yeah. earlier, definitely. Yeah. No, um, the, the 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 next one is uh, Halloween. Um, I, I mean, many of us have uh, have uh, I'm pretty sure delved into some studies about Halloween. Yeah. Um, you know, All Hallows Eve and, and and stuff like that. Um, In the there, Latin, there's, uh, take that as the Day of the Dead, of course, and celebrate. That's right. Uh huh. Like it's Christmas, really. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, no, and there, that, that's that's a, a real strange factor I see. Um, what's your opinion on that? People really 
going forth and celebrating the dead. Rather well, than I tell you, I tell you what. Mm-hmm. No, I tell you what. As far as the uh, the celebration of the dead, that that one thing is is um, I think that one's the most easily to be. One that's not as easily seen is the dressing up of you know different things like vampires, witches, demons, you know, you name it. The dressing up yeah. of for fun, all in the name of fun. But now, if people would really realize um, that truth is stranger than fiction, that there were actually real vampires, that there were actually you know there are, are actually real demons, and you know, of course, witches and definitely werewolves that they actually did exist. And and if people would really realize what those things mean um, in the occult, or what those things mean on the dark side, I don't think they'll send their kids out dressed like that. I don't think they will take part in it. Um, well, now, you know, some, some people... Well, go ahead. I was just going to... I just had a comment on the, the holidays that we're speaking about here, and uh, there's a purpose for the holidays and why these occult figures of powers that be or whatever promote these holidays and it's uh, for mm-hmm. the energies that they use, that they feed on for the people. And a lot of the people focus. say, well, there mm-hmm. are a lot of people that give positive energy into the holidays. Yeah, but they don't think about the negative aspects like Christmas. People get upset when they don't get what they want. There's a lot of negative energy going on in Christmas. And a lot that's of right. Don't show it, but the energy is there. The energy never lies. And that's what they oh, that's right. With this energy. That's right, and uh, you know, along with that, this is why you know in my book again, I, I mentioned you know overcoming mental and spiritual manipulation through self mastery under the will of God, uh, because we are being manipulated and uh, we are being uh, fed upon, and uh, you know, like like he just said, they um, they want to inspire you, but with the wrong things, you know, and, and and therefore they can control your inspirations. Well. Hello. Is everybody still there? I'm here. Phone just kind of went dead for a second. I didn't hear nothing, but I still heard, heard the music, so. Okay, uh, do, is Sifu still on? I'm not sure. I'm not hearing him. Oh, hey, we got man. To disclaimer, man. We need to go ahead and do that, bro. Yes, one second. Let me do that right quick. Disclaimer, disclaimer. disclaimer. None of the opinions and views expressed by the people on the air tonight are the expressions and views of Blog Talk Radio. Okay, I saw Sifu Harris. He was back on, but I think he hung back up. Let's see if we can get him back on again. Disclaimer, disclaimer. None of the opinions and views expressed by the people on the air tonight are the expressions and views of Hello. Gary. Are Hello. You, uh, did, so did your phone cut out on you? Um, I'm sure yeah, it probably did. I, how's the sound coming through? It's coming it's, through it's clear, loud and clear. Okay. Actually, if okay. you could turn it down maybe one notch, that would be perfect. Okay, let me just move my mic here. I got a, a boom mic here. How's that? You, you sound nice. Okay, perfect. Um, okay. As Melchizedek just requested that we play the disclaimer. Um, okay. There was a show that recently just got cut off again. Basically, um, was uh, terminated. Wow. Yeah. Uh, due to um, due to the subject matters they're speaking upon, of course, it was um, Hollywood Tony P show. Mel. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Well, what, and, uh, what was he talking about? Uh, he was basically talking about the nine one one conspiracies and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And obviously... Disclaimer, disclaimer. None of the opinions and views expressed by the people on the air tonight are the expressions and views of Blog Talk Radio. And this okay, is basically... Yes, this is basically the, the, third, uh, the third person I know of who's got the show taken from them. Yeah, and wow. what, what, yeah, what happens, they basically just totally delete you from the system, everything. 
So if you wow. have uh, if you have archives of shows, I'm pretty sure they're all gone. And um, this guy had a real great show. You know, I, I'm I, just to put it out there for Blog Talk Radio. I, I'm not advocating what what they were speaking of that night. And obviously, the show isn't about that type of controversy. It's about enlightenment. But uh, they were just speaking their mind, and their shows end up got, uh, being cut off completely. I, so I will touch on that. Uh, topic that you just uh, said, or that phrase that you just said, uh, they delete the archives of this net. The archives are still in there. Knowledge is every show that knowledge ever did is still in the archives, and you can still. Well, why is it when I go onto a site, it just says user? Um, what well, is it? Use their site user does not down. exist. Their site is shut down, but you can go into the main archives, like type into the search, because I've that's how I went back and downloaded all the rest of his shows. Because I off of the feed, of the right? Yep, off the feed. Oh wow! Because you can okay. play it and you can download it from the play screen while it's playing. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. my <laughs> disclaimer for the show Paranormal 101. Of course, we love Blog Talk Radio. We have no quarries with them. Uh, it's a great establishment for people like us that are trying to get information out but i guess it has to be within guidelines so um of course to- totally understandable yes and if you ever uh uh think of getting on that type of uh subject matter gary i just say throw a disclaimer out there just like what i did and uh, right. I okay think that that'll usually save you most of the time just to but, show um, you what they're picky about too is the they were talking about the 9/11 quote unquote conspiracy knowledge was reading uh, the tablets of creation Sumerian and mm-hmm. uh, we also have another friend, friend of the- um oh. long his show was actually they uh, reserved him for a religious show which is not really a religious thing he's doing so like they they wouldn't give him a good slot and. and they basically put him on a certain, like we're in a paranormal, uh, paranormal mm-hmm. bracket. They put him in a religious bracket when it was he was originally in a self help bracket. So like they mm-hmm. narrowed down where he had to be and what times he could be on and this and that. So you got to be real careful about what you're talking about. Mm. Okay. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what I like I like to throw out there that um what I like to do is um you know I, I'll share the information about um, the who what when where and and hows and whys, but uh, the focus that I put on is in the, the individual, because ultimately it's our choice. Uh, that's mm-hmm. the power given to us at creation. It's it's yeah. choice. You know, we can well, we can avoid we can avoid all these these different things. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think m- more importantly, what what um, what troubles me is not that these things exist and that they are controlling the world. What troubles me is uh, you know how people view the world that they have no idea you know yeah. and it's like you know i wish that people could know more people could know so well it's, well we, uh, we've been lucky uh we've been lucky enough to have over what maybe 10 shows and we've never got contacted by blog talk so i'm pretty sure we're on the path here but once you get into those real real controversial subjects it really shows you how Powerful it is, you yeah, know. Uh, when, when that when that amendment gets thrown out the door of free speech, you know, uh, <laughs> what what's to look at in the future? But let, let's well, back on to what we're speaking on. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a whole other show right there. But but I like yeah. to get back on what we're talking about. <laughs> Could you maybe um, is, is there any more things you might know about uh, L? Because I, I noticed you mentioned elves, and I never really thought there was any correlation with elves in these uh, basic lies that are taught to us. Okay. Well, what what I've uh, understood about elves and uh, leprechauns and and things like that is that whenever you see an anomaly like that, it's always got something to do with follow, fallen angel interaction. It's mm-hmm. always got something to do with it. I gotta I gotta spit a, a comment right quick. When you mm-hmm. talk about lies, you have to understand also that there is a truth in every lie. Because if there is right. a truth in every lie, people won't believe a lie. So that's why mm-hmm. they build a house of lies on the foundation of truth. That's right. That's right. You know, they put the half truths out there. Now, yep. um, I think um, 
for your listeners, a, a good book for them to uh, to check out is by Philip Wilkinson. Philip Wilkinson. Um, it's the Illustrated Dictionary of Mythology. Um, all the heroes, heroines, gods and goddesses from around the world, or so-called gods and goddesses. But um, once you go through this book and put it into perspective of what we're talking about now, um, the lights are going to go off. You're going you're gonna to start to really see on a deeper level. But, um, yeah, the elves, um, you know, from, you know, Irish folklore and all that stuff, um, and the fairies as well, um, what I've come to find out is that there is some type of connection between, uh, you know, genetic manipulation um, and, and um, hybridization of the fallen angels with, with human beings. And um, if you look at the fairies, a fairy is nothing but a, a being of light. And... Um, you know, I'm pretty sure people talk about have talked about orbs and yeah. balls of light. Uh huh. And so it's it's the same thing. There's a connection. Uh, when these things were cast down to the earth, um, they went into all the corners of the earth and they began to give themselves different names, pass themselves off as uh, different things. You know, from uh, you know demigods to uh, genies to leprechauns to because they had power. You know, they had power, and human beings, um, you know, like like I said before, they they were inspired by things that were more powerful than them. Um, Which so, actually correlates with another subject that we have for the show, the, the Watchers. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, well, you know what? Before we go into that, I, I wanted to mention a, a couple of other things about, um, you know, uh, our holidays and our, oh, yeah. um, the things that we recognize. Um, you know, I look at Easter, right? Easter is the day that um, you know we we Christians we we recognize the the, the death of uh, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, right? And yeah. um, you know that's his day. But now again, just like Santa on Christmas, um, you have something sharing the scene. You have a bunny, and you have eggs. Now, according to um, history and how it happened, you know, before um, the arrival of Jesus, you know, the devil uh, caused the fall of man, and he had control of all of the souls, every one soul he had control of. And when Jesus came and completed the transaction, he lost, um, you know, control of all of the souls. And he thus had to do it one by one. He thus had to, um, you know, get permission from us um, somehow through deception, one by one. Now, here's a question. What does the soul represent, or what represents the soul? Mm. Does anybody have an answer? The soul is a symbol of the, the the symbol of the soul is the egg. And so here we go. We have Peter Cottontail. Um, going around either collecting eggs, right, or offering eggs. Either way, it's a counterfeit. He's saying, hey, Jesus is offering you a new soul, a new life, a new birth. Well, guess what? I have an egg for you. See, take this one. It's pretty. Or he's saying to the little kids, hey, help me collect the souls again. Help me uh, hunt for the eggs. Either oh, way, God. it's a counterfeit. Oh, yes. The deception runs very deep. Um, I I never heard this this analogy of uh, the egg before. <laughs> this, is, this is this is one of the things that God has revealed to me. Um, I do a lot of uh, deep cross referencing, and uh, yeah. this is something this is something that came upon me, and I just shook because I, I felt so bamboozled. I felt so just hoodwinked, if you will, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's the the father of all lies. Um, you know, Melchizedek, you were talking about lies before. Yes. Uh, he's the ultimate deceiver. Yeah. And then what's that they say in the Bible about the devil? You know, nobody can quote the scripture better. That's right. And, mm -hmm. and nobody can and, and nobody can distort it and, and counterfeit it better. Yeah. You know? It in own way. That's right. And so, here, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the, the, this really ties into our, another segue uh, for yeah on in the show, which was the Luciferian agenda, but um, I see Lucifer's hand in a lot of these pagan uh, myths you're, you're referring to, 
Mm-hmm. Is it a is it a, a trend that you see that that really runs deep within all these uh, holy days? Well, definitely. Let me tell you something. Okay, I mentioned um, about children before, right? Well, when my son came up to me after, um, and this was about seven or eight years ago, before I had um, this epiphany, um, I was telling him about the tooth fairy. And I really didn't feel a whole lot of attachment to it, but, you know, society says that, no, this is how you protect their innocence. You know, you, you allow them to experience these things. Let them be a kid. That's what they tell you, right? Yes. Yeah. So I'm just following the law. And when my son uh, said to me, uh, so, Dad, is, she's going to she's gonna come in my room? And I said, yeah. He said, how's she going to get in? And then I knew, where, I knew where he was going because he knew that, you know, nobody comes into Dad's house like that, and Dad's very protective. <laughs> he, he, he knew that. So yeah. he couldn't connect the two. He couldn't connect it. And so at that point in time, I said to myself, I can't deceive my son anymore because yeah. here's, here's what's happening. I'm telling my son, hey, believe in Santa, believe in Santa. Hey, believe in the Tooth Fairy, believe in Frosty, believe in Rudolph. You know, you're getting, all, you're getting them all stirred up. You're getting his emotions just going, juices flowing, pictures and movies and, you know, songs and just memories, right? And then at 12 or, or actually earlier than that, 8 or 9, you're saying, hey, all that was fake. Um, don't believe in that anymore. Um, none of that was real. You never saw it, right? So, yeah, none of it was real. Now, believe in God who you never saw. And you know See? what else? You know what so, yeah. Whenever you, yes. do, when they do find out the truth, they're like, this person that I trusted all this time since I was a child has been yeah. lying to me this whole time. There's that negative energy again mm-hmm. coming out because the child's going to feel that it was deceived. Yep. That's right. And so you pro- you, what, what we've just done is we provided a basis for doubt, a basis mm-hmm. for a lack of faith. Yep. And this is the, this is, man, the, Sun Tzu said it best, the basis of all war is deception. And oh, we are yeah. in a spiritual war. I will tell you right now, that little bitty book, The Art of War, is used mm-hmm. in so many ways every yep. day. When you're awake, yes. when you're asleep, with your children at school, when they're at home watching TV, when you're out at the gas station riding down the road, when you're picking out groceries at the supermarket, every way you can think of, they yeah. use that. In our community, right. divide and conquer. You know, my enemy enemy is my friend. All, mm-hmm. The whole nine. So, I mean, yeah. it's, I think it's kind of important that people read that, peep the message, but use it for a good sense, for knowledge, as a tool. Instead of mm-hmm. using it in, in, in a bad way to get over on somebody or to manipulate somebody, because that's yeah, what it's doing to us with it. It's it's required reading. It's kind of like um, the the song that you guys played last week, "Nature of the Threat." <laughs> mm-hmm. You must you must realize the nature of the threat. Uh, we are in a war, and many people um, feel that the world is their own personal playground, and it's yeah. not. Yeah. And so, oh wow! But now, totally. But, but now you you were you were asking me about the the luciferian threat uh the luciferian um agenda um wow <laughs> a lot i can see about that brother um let's see where do i begin well well yes. i i think we 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 might be able to tie this into the watchers um do do your research of the watchers have you ever been able to correlate uh maybe lucifer being a part of the watchers Oh yeah, no he, he. I mean, you had different uh, classification of angels, and uh, they all had their different responsibilities. Um, Lucifer being, you know, the archangel. So you know, obviously he influenced the one third to rebel with him, and uh, oh, they were cast out. Okay. Yes, they were cast out wow. to the earth. So they they all are a part of his army, and they are the princes of the north and the princes of the east and the west and the south. Um, they have their different corners of the earth that they uh, that they uh, handle, that they are in charge of, and uh, they have different men uh, on the earth that are in charge. And uh, these men you probably never see, you know, but they yeah. are running things. They're running things, and uh, that's the bottom well, line. And, like in the yeah, book of it's Enoch, not the George Bushes, and it's not anything like that. Those are the fall guys. Those are the guys that yeah. make the fall. It's the people that pull their strings, those puppet masters, those are the ones you'll never see them because they're too smart to be in the spotlight. They don't want to be seen. They That's right. Oh, of course. Of course. Mm-hmm. 
Yep, that man low. On the topic of the Watchers, um, through your research of Enoch, uh, what, what have you really came across? Because I always ask that perspective of all our listeners, because uh, Enoch's work is real profound. Well, and, um, what I, mm-hmm. Go ahead. I was just wondering, where, what, what was your thoughts on Enoch and basically his role with the Watchers? Well, what I've what I've seen about Enoch is, um, you know, if, through reading the book and everything, they they uh, they came to um, to together the, the Watchers and they decided, hey, you know what? Let's intervene in the affairs of men. Let's take wives, and uh, this is what Enoch, uh, the book of Enoch, is covering. And you know, some of them were doubtful. They were like, hey, you know what? You're not going to commit if we get in trouble. Some of you guys are going to just back out. And they said, no, let's make a attack with each other that we will see this thing through and they did and they had no idea about the wrath of God they had never seen it and so when the wrath of God came down and it was just a terrible thing they went to Enoch and they're telling Enoch pray to God for us tell him please that we're sorry and God told Enoch to tell them that Rather than have men pray for you, you should have, you should be praying for men because they're the ones who have fallen. Now that you have fallen, without provocation, without deception, you've fallen of your own accord, you will never be forgiven. Man will be forgiven, but you will never be forgiven. And so this is why an angel cannot have grace. He cannot um, be redeemed because they fell, they fell from grace without provocation. They had everything. They had power. They had everything. And, and as so, the ancient text states, that they were basically banished from the heavens also. They and lost that, their that place. Was, yes, and that would be one indicator that they're not going to be coming back <laughs> to those good realms. So uh, nope. that's almost proof saying that they were uh, banished to our realms. So does that uh, have any connection with... To the um, No, the uh, basic... You know how they speak of the manipulation that occurred um, mm-hmm. of of our DNA through the fallen angels. Does, does, oh, yeah. does that automatically tie us into a Lucifer uh, species or a Luciferian species, since he he was mainly uh, the head honcho of the bunch? Well, if if you want to talk about our hybridization, is that what you get talking speaking about? Yes. Yeah. But then well, uh, when I'm when I'm tying it in with the Watchers, uh, you know how the Watchers refers how the Watchers came down and they did their manipulation. Um, mm-hmm. I'm just wondering, was that under the call of Lucifer? Was that Lucifer's indoctrination on humanity? Um, you know what? I, I'm not sure. And and that, as a matter of fact, um, I think I think the the angels. All of them were, were were tempted with the affairs of men um, at some point. I don't think um, many of them wanted to go that far. Um, I think uh, Lucifer was spreading uh, venom around the heavenly realms, and um, some of them probably gained more and more confidence to go ahead and do this thing. And as you can see, um, you know, as I mentioned about uh, how they were unsure at first, and they wanted yeah. to be sure that they would back each other up. And uh, when, once they made that pact, um, they went ahead and did it. Now, they mentioned some of the names like, you know, Azazel and Raziel yeah. and um, uh, Semyaza. Semyaza, um, I'm thinking, is, I'm thinking there's a correlation between him and Lucifer, but it doesn't really say that. Well, doesn't, so, uh, isn't Azazel um, basically the, the, the most evil known archangel? Uh huh. Uh, yeah, all well, archangels? Uh huh. And there, there's there's a um, well, they say the leader was Semyaza, and so um, Azazel. Uh, they all had different. Um, how could I say it? Uh, different um, things that they contributed to the uh, the fall of man, and uh, different um, mm, things that okay. strengths that they had. Like okay. you know, one 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 angel. I forgot his name, but uh, I think it was Raziel or or uh, one of the others. But uh, he taught women how to seduce mankind through, you know, perfumes and, uh, and makeup. And so it, 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 the, the, the book of Enoch lists all that and how they, they uh, corrupted um, the earth. And so, but knowing which one is Lucifer, and uh, it, it, from what I've read, it really didn't say. 
I'm thinking that he had he was going by a different name. As it's said through history, he's had many names. I got I got several comments here. <laughs> Have you all ever watched the movie Father, Denzel Washington? Oh yes. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good movie that kind of describes what we're talking about for the people out there. They Time have, is on my side. And yeah, mm-hmm. and um, there's a correlation that I've actually heard many people talk about, and I've done some research on, and it, it makes a whole lot of sense. You know, um, we speak about the watchers; they watch over us and manipulate us throughout all of time, just since mm-hmm. time began or however long. Well, you can right. also make that correla- correlation with uh, extraterrestrials. What do they do? Oh, yeah. And like the Sumerians say, they came down and manipulated our DNA to get what they wanted, and they came from the heavens, you know? Well, you know, absolutely. What I believe, what I believe is that, yeah, yeah, I believe that these stories of these angels came from the Sumerian work of the Anunnakis. It was just translated later on in the latter days into angels, but then you go into the ancient work, it's almost exactly like the Sumerians when they refer to the Anunnakis. So mm-hmm. a lot of I hope people come. Yeah. That because I mean, angels have wings. You know, uh, what do these aliens do? They fly around in spaceships, or they yeah. fly around in their Merkaba, or however you know. Uh huh. Pass. So I mean, well, well, you know what? Uh huh. Go ahead. Well, from well, what I know, there was no the way to, the, to depict this type of flight that they had. So the only way was to add things onto these figures in order to well, depict. Well, let, let, let me. Let, let me interject something. Um, yes. Now you were you were saying about the correlation between uh, Lucifer and the the Watchers. Um, well, I can tell you this. Um, you know, they call him Beelzebub, and Beelzebub means ruler of those who fly or flit. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yes, so that that puts it into a little bit of a, a better perspective um, because if they were cast down, and if they were like he was saying using their merkaba. Or, or, or what have you to move around? Then that, I guess you can call that flitting or flying, just like the uh, the fairies and the pixies would, uh, with their little balls of light. And so he was a ruler of those who fly. And so, um, you know, whether it be by ship as well, um, yep. you know, we see we see ancient cave paintings of uh, you know well, beings in ships. Those fiery wheel, you know. Exactly, wheels with. And you know what? Let me tell you something. You know how it says a wheel within a wheel? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do we know about time travel and the gyroscope and wheels within a wheel? Counter, yeah. Counter-rotating fields of energy. Yeah. <laughs> That's talking Can't about time around. travel. Electromagnetic forces. Wow. Yes, yes, sir. So it's so all there in the Bible. That's basically a way of depicting on how they actually travel, if you were yes. to break it down scientifically. Counter rotating fields of energy. Exactly. Yeah, Magnetic. Magnetic, go, though. Go hand in mm-hmm. hand. You know, uh, a lot of these spaceships may not run on batteries and stuff. They may run on mind power, spirit power, you know. Yes. And if you, I'll take it a little further. We are all made up of counter rotating fields of energy oh, and yes. atoms. Absolutely. So, oh, you know, you, if you look at the electron, what does it do? And then, uh, and, and as we yeah, and as we know, uh, everything has its polarity. So that's mm-hmm. that's another key factor in order to create this um, canceling out effect we're referring to. Mm-hmm. And, and and that basically uh, we could also point to the zero point energy for those researchers out there that are into that. Um, have mm-hmm. you ever done any research into the zero point energy? Um, I'm um, basically tapping into the energy from out of space and stuff like that. That's how I believe that they travel. Uh, well, I've heard of it. I haven't really delved into that that, uh, that topic a whole lot, but I, I've definitely heard of the zero point. Yes, it's but, very, um, it's very fascinating. Very. Well, it's an up and coming. It's not mainstream source of power yet, but it's it's kind of up and coming. There's only so long before they can't hold it back any longer from actually a whole lot of people understanding. But it is, and uh, well, there's only so long before the oil runs out, also. So that's well, probably going to, to make be the main factor. All the money they can off the oil, and what people don't realize is that money it ain't made of nothing but cotton. It comes from blue jeans. They chop it up and make it into paper and put ink on it. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's wait, still. So, and I, I just I believe in free energy and Tesla, but that's a whole yeah. other show. That's oh, a whole that's other yeah. show. Hey, 
I'm trying to tell you, Tesla is a deep subject right there. Nikola Tesla, yes. he was on yes. to something there, but the money-hungry yeah. people, they, they just couldn't get around that. You know, they were mm-hmm. with that power, you know, they with that the greed control, you know. That's right. Totally. And I, 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 I wanted to... Mm-hmm. I wanted to share wait, wait, wait. something. Go ahead. I'll keep going. No, I wanted to share something else about um, uh, the how could I say it? The interconnection of, of Lucifer with society and everything, and uh, put it in perspective practically. Um, you know, the National Board of Standards. Um, it was renamed the uh, NIST. And, uh, you know, back in, I think it was the 60s, they called for an encryption algorithm. And, uh, you know, after that, IBM responded with something called Lucifer. And it was an encryption code. It was called the Lucifer code, and IBM came up with that. And it was adopted. Yes. And not only that, you can make a connection there to Lucifer meaning light bearer, as a lot of people have seen in the Zeitgeist movie or read in other That's things. right. They've done some research. Mm-hmm. And and loose in Spanish means light. So, yes. you know, Lucifer, there you go. And, um, you know, it, it was adopted in, in, in 1977 as the data encryption standard, and that's what we use today, you know, the binary, you know, zero one zero one, all of that. Oh, my and, God. So, so you're, are, you, are you almost correlating this with the Internet? Um, well, hmm. It could be in a way. Uh, hey, you know, listen. They use more than zeros and ones, but that's exactly. just the newer stuff they've come up with. And I'll break encryption down one more time for us, too. Okay, Sumerians, Babylonians. When you mm-hmm. babble, you cover things up with too much talk. That's right. Um, Tower of Babel. I mean, you gotta, yeah, you gotta pay attention to what's going on and what do we do with our internet? It's a tower, it's a stream that goes up to a satellite, comes back down to us, or runs through an Ethernet cable. We're, we're building the Tower of Babel without people even all over again. My brother, them. my brother, you're on it. That's right. Oh yeah, I've been there for a long time, bro. <laughs> hey, listen. Listen, let me let me let me take it one step further with the uh the Ethernet. You know, ether means comes from the word ethereal, which means heavenly realms. Yes. Yes. So the with the Ethernet and the internet we are connecting to the heavenly realms. Yep. And <laughs> spirituality without people realizing it too. That's right they under have our no noses. idea. Why right under our noses. Wow. Right under your noses. Let me tell you something. I, I, I want to tell you something about time travel. Um <laughs> Wow. Well, people, people, um, um, yeah, yeah. let me stop you right quick. Is there any more you could add on to that um, IBM um, uh, thought you were you were just displaying right now? Because that was, that blew me. I never knew that they created this encryption off of the name Lucifer. And, yes. and you, we would also have to say that that was during the beginning of what we know of computers now. Yes. So that well, well, encryption is, is basically... Definitely in the computers we use today. Still, yep. let, let, let me let me find something for you. Building blocks. You, you got to build the, yeah. build the earlier edition. Hold on, I'm gonna read something to you. Okay, hold, hold yeah. on one second. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah, we needed this disclaimer right before he reads. I hate to cut you off. Let me try to get one running right quick. Yeah. But that that is fascinating. Um. That connection to Lucifer, I didn't know that. I did not know that. Okay, okay. Disclaimer, disclaimer. None of the opinions and views expressed by the people on the air tonight are the expressions and views of Blog Talk Radio. We just had to spit that out there right quick there, sorry. Hey, right on, right on. Um, Here's another book that uh, your listeners can uh, pick up. It's called Code Breakers. From Hieroglyphs to Hackers is by Simon Adams. And uh I haven't read it though. Yeah, wow. it's okay. I'm gonna read this to you. Hold on a second, let me pull it up here. Uh um, let me find it. Okay. Um Yeah, okay. It says um it says 
says today, it says the power of Lucifer, basically. And it says today every government, army, and business uses computers of everything for everything from aiming missiles to conducting massive business deals. Uh, millions of individuals give our, our credit card and other personal uh, details over the Internet to obtain CDs, books, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it says, let me get to the, okay. It says, since the 1960s, code makers have been inventing codes to make business communications safer. One of the most famous and the most secure is Lucifer. It says, Lucifer is now the official standard encryption code in the U.S. It translates messages into binary digits and then shuffles those digits like a deck of cards. There you go. <laughs> oh, yes. wow. Yes. Oh, man. That, that is, that's mind-boggling right there. It's some, some deep stuff, you know. A lot of it, people it, don't realize this stuff. It shook me when I when I when I heard it, and uh, but here's another thing. Um, this was developed by, and I'm not I'm gonna say the name at the end, but it was developed by Cambridge University um, and Hafa Israel, uh, and the, the University of Norway, and it was a code, an encryption code, and the name of the code is Serpent. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is deep. Wow. Yes, sir, so. That's what I've been listening in and basically digging for right there, and you basically let us know. So uh, I totally appreciate that one. Wow. Mm -hmm. Lucent Technologies. Lucent Technologies, that's right. That's right. And, and it's all, you see, you see the prefix, L-U-C? It's telling you. Well, you know, it's, it's, you know if, you're not, if you don't have a trained eye, it's hard to catch it. You got to be able oh, to keep man. the symbolism and the uh, subconscious that they're trying to reach without you realizing. It's sigil magic. That's what it's called. And uh, have your your listeners, uh, you guys can look that up. Sigil magic. S i g i l magic. Yeah. yeah. That'll tell you how they work. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, well, what were we getting at um, before I cut you off right there? Because that was really amazing. I needed to hear that because I, I haven't heard that before, but. Um, I think uh -huh. you were getting on, um, I think, the Luciferian agenda, I think you were getting at. Um, well, well, basically, um, you know, it, it, you can see it throughout history. I mean, um, you know, there there are different gods with different names. Like there was an Irish god named Lou. His name was L-U-G-H, Lou. And his, his uh, the way you described him was the shining one because he was bright. And his name was Lou, and he was an Irish god. And so, you know, that's part of mythology. But when you put it in perspective of what the Bible says and, and, and that these things were not just myths and made-up stories, that they actually had truth to them, then you say, wait a minute, wait a minute. This guy has had many different names throughout history, and he's been all over the place. I mean, what did, jo what did he say uh, in the book of Job when... God, when he went, went to present himself uh, before God with the angels, and God said, where have you been? And he says, walking to and fro in, in the earth and back and forth, just walking to and fro and back and forth for yeah, thousands and thousands too. and thousands of years. This yeah. is why when you brought up the, the, the movie um, Fallen and he says, time is on my side, I mean, that's all he had, he's had his time, yeah. just to manipulate mankind. And, it, and not only that, but it's just to, to let some people know this is just a plant of seed, and this is just so you can do your own research and, and make your own assimilation on the topic. And what I'm going to say is we are a lot older than what our his story tells us. His that story. The children go to school because all they do is write a different story every time something collapses. The last mm -hmm. time it collapses, the same people were on top. And those people just created another story, another chapter in the story, and built back up from there. They keep us as slaves every time. Totally right. Before totally the end, right. And before they That's start right. again, they shut everything down, and then they go, like you said, they walk to and fro and in and out of the earth. That it takes mm -hmm. something right there. How do they survive these cataclysms? How do they survive these, uh, like the Sumerian tablets say, the... It sounds like a nuclear holocaust. They're bunkers mm -hmm. in the ground. They're in the earth. That's right. To, in, That's to right. and fro, in and out of the earth for thousands. That's right. It's like 
Sifu just said. Well, they also mention Armag- uh, the basic story of what we know of as Armageddon in the old Sumerian text, where they were talking about the uh, the angels firing off basically uh, nuclear weapons. Mm-hmm. So, so could that be true? You know, um, they they found glass seventy feet under the underneath the Egyptian sand. So, it's you know, those are, not just glass. But it, exactly. it's glass that is caused by certain um, temperatures and certain fusions happening. Crystallization. Yes. You're, you're also, talking Fahrenheit over 2,000, 3,000 degrees in order yes, to do what they did. fields of the glass. Not totally. Not spots, but fields of it. And if you also mm-hmm. look at the globe and look at the impacts of, uh, they say, craters in science, you yes. can look at, and you can see, like, there was a war going off between certain Absolutely. places and bombs going off. And if you look mm. at one place that has not had one strike of a crater meteor, whatever science supposed to call it, that's Greenland. There's not one on that whole space of land. But everywhere well, we else, could also, like, they were we bombing could, main cities. Yeah, we could tie this into uh, the last conversation when you brought up Bellbeck uh, seafood. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. The ruins. You know what? What? What's the use of these ancient landing strips and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. So yeah, there, there, there is well, some. There's so much proof out there that we have to find. Well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna share something um, biblical, and um, it's in um, Book of Ezekiel, and you know it's talking about how uh, you know the devil. It's in Ezekiel 28. And God is talking to Lucifer, and he's telling him that he was the most beautiful of all of his creation, and that, uh, you know, he was in the Garden of Eden, and but he sinned, and he said he cast him down. And uh, he says, you walked amongst the fiery stones, but I cast you down, O guardian cherub. And so um, I, I think I mentioned this a little bit before, and how if you cross-reference um, the word fiery stone that's mentioned in the Bible, You'll find out that the fiery the fiery stone was actually a planet. So God is talking to Lucifer and He's telling him that you walked amongst the planets, you were in charge of the planetary systems, but I cast you down. And so when when you look at Mars, then it comes into a little bit uh, more of a clearer focus on what was happening on Mars. Uh, there was a cataclysm on Mars, uh, you know. Actually, it wasn't just you know meteors. There was something purposefully happening. You look at Cydonia, and it's unmistakable. You know those are pyramids. You know that's a face, um, yeah. and the face looks like you know the face looks like what was going on on in Egypt with the Sphinx. And so, you know, it, it, it's just it's just a lot of um, a lot of study. It's a lot of it's a lot of uh, information to um, to swallow at once when you've been told I, something totally opposite all your life. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Fu, have you heard of the? Um, what was that? I was going to oh, well, say, uh, I listened to a Coast to Coast AM show the other day. I mm. think it was the 20th of this past month, and they had uh, Richard C. Hoagland on there. And he was talking about uh, the discoveries that they're making on Mars with the pictures they're sending back and the rovers or this and that and this and that. And oh, that. you saw that? Explaining how the pyramids were made of glass. When the light shined on them, the prisms were coming out of those pyramids near the face. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I, just something that I've heard. I thought I'd throw in there since we were talking about Cytonia and stuff. So. No, I heard about that as well. You know, something uh, that uh, I saw that was kind of uh, freaky um, uh, is a picture from NASA, and uh, it's, it looks like a humanoid uh, creature. Um, a humanoid oh, the one person. that they're, yeah, they're saying that it looks like a Sasquatch. Yeah, it's, it's like you can see the person perched up on the rock. You yeah. know, at the edge of the rock, and and you know that's not, you know, a rock formation with the arm and all of that. I mean, that's exactly. You know, it, it makes you it makes you wonder, but you know, like I said, we've been fed um, this this you know this meal of we're the only ones, you know, all our life, and uh, when we when when we start to have these conversations, you know, people look at you incredulously, uh, you know, like it's not true, but. The facts are there. Yeah, history, history, history is there. Playing. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. I was just saying uh, they're playing, you know, indoctrination, you know, from seeds they start, you know, so 
people that they hope people won't have conversations like this so they can keep doing what they're doing without any fault. Right, so right. If people find out, but, we need to watch out. Preparedness is awareness. Be prepared for right. anything because we're going to need to start over again sometime maybe. Right. And, you know, this is this is why I wrote my book. You know, uh, it's, it's you know, it's I don't want to, I mean, we can have the conversations, but my main focus is to tell people, hey, you have the power, the power of choice oh, getting to you at creation. You know, choice was coveted by the devil. You know, that's the, his argument with God, that we don't have freedom of choice. Well, oh, God sent Jesus. Reason. Oh, go ahead. No, God sent Jesus to, to prove that, hey, we do have freedom of choice. And um, we can we can choose to uh, to 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 uh, control our own uh, path. We don't have to you know worry about what the uh, the powers that be are doing. They, you know they running this thing. That's they have the power. There's nothing I can do to stop them. Nor do I want to. God, you know and, God is going to do that. People, but I control me. I control me. That's the thing. Yeah, a lot of people will ask the question. You know, well, why do they want to control us? It's because of how powerful our spirits are, and they try to get right. that secret from us. And and mm -hmm. that's part of my mission actually is to help people realize what's going on with you. You know, it, it, look inside. Don't look outside for the answers. You can look that's outside, right. but it's gonna the search is gonna take so much longer for something that's the truth already inside you. You, you know, yeah. the spirit's not gonna lie to you. That's right. You're right. You're exactly right. Hey, Man, I got a question for you. It's kind of off topic, man, but um, you, are you a Gnostic Christian or are you a Christian? Have you read, like, uh, the Tablets of Jemanuel? Have you delved into that at all? Uh, no, not Jemanuel. No, I haven't. Um, yeah. But I, I've, yeah, I've kind of been all over the map, though. Yeah, have you read, the, like, the Gospel according to Thomas and, and all of these, that, the canons that they left out of uh, the, the Bible that people know, the King James Version, quote, unquote, you know? Well, I tell you what, I have I have Jasher, I have uh Barnabas, I have uh I have Enoch. Um but I, I really I really haven't gone into the ones that um you know, the, some of the other books that they left out because I, I I feel more comfortable with, you know, just going to the Bible, finding the phrase and cross referencing it to death to the nth degree. And um well, once I once I do that, let me tell you, once I do that, once I take a phrase like fiery stone, it leads me to so much. It leads me to Thomas. It leads me to Jasher, you know. But um, that's that's pretty much how I do it. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Well, there's but a no, lot yeah. of um, ancient but, biblical but scholars. A lot of ways to do it, though. Yeah. yeah. There's there's a lot of ancient biblical scholars that w that would say everything we are saying tonight is totally incorrect, like the use of <laughs> Lucifer and Satan. Because uh, they, will, they, they, they will also they tell you that a priest is closer to God than you are, which is a total lie, also. Yeah. Well, right. I'm, I'm referring strictly to the to Hebrews, God. and in the Hebrews, they, they they take it a lot deeper by by uh, using the oldest ancient Hebrew, which was like terms like Hallel, right, and um, Hallel Ben Shahar or something like that. I guess that was the actual. The, what the Hebrews consider the, the actual name of Lucifer. So, mm. you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of... Um, light, isn't it? Exactly. But, you see, these are what the, the biblical scholars will get at us by uh, us using incorrect names, is all well, I wanted you know to what? throw out there. But there's so many different names you can use, it, it really doesn't matter, but... When you when I'm referring to the biblical scholars, they'll tell you, "Oh, you're incorrect with the the words you're using, this and that." So I just wanted to throw that out there for the biblical scholars that are thinking we don't know what we're talking about here. <laughs> well, well, you know what the, the the thing is, what I would say to the, uh, the biblical scholars, I would, you know, I I consider myself one. Uh, Okay, something happened there. Uh, were you guys uh, cut off also and had to recall, or were you still on the line? I, I didn't know what was going on, so I just kept quiet. I didn't say anything. Yeah, me either. I was still on the line. I didn't, I didn't say anything either. Okay, I'm sorry about that, guys. It looked like we had a little technical difficulties there, but at least we're back online, and we're back online with Seafood Gary Jones-Harris. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience, people. We're, we're back on. And uh, we definitely wanted to get back into the subjects we had for seafood tonight. Um, we talked about the ancient myths and the Watchers, the Luciferian agenda. Um, maybe uh, we can get onto this other topic I had up, which was uh, biblical prophecies. Mm. 
Uh, I'm pretty right sure you you've dug into that and uh, uh, have a have a nice load of info on that you can share with us. <laughs> well, well, we we've touched on a few things. Um, you know, when I mentioned the fiery stones and and Ezekiel and the uh, wheel within a wheel and the concept of uh, counter rotating fields of energy. Um, but then there's the um, you know Revelation, which yeah. is the uh, <laughs> There we go. I guess you could say, yeah that's a that's a book of uh bewilderment for many um mm-hmm. you know when we when we're talking about uh you know beasts rising out of the sea um and you know seven horns and crowns and all of these different things I guess the best thing would be to do is um for you to ask ask me a question or or something and then we can we can go from there well on, I, on what you just mentioned it's, just a, broad, it's a broad topic but oh, yeah, yeah you want me to bring something up yeah, well, um, on what basically we could go off what you just mentioned. Do, do you think those were truly just metaphors or literal topics to be taken in a literal sense? Well, uh, oh, I, prophet I literally think, beats messenger. It does. You know, I mean, like uh, Edgar Casey prophet telling the future is kind mm-hmm. of different from what prophet meant then. The prophet was messenger, somebody preaching a good message and telling you just had knowledge, you know, and was able to use it trying to spread that knowledge. Well, of course, we're going off the layman's term here, and everybody knows prophecy as something that was prophetic, prophetically spoken, something on the, the lines of Nostradamus. Well, well, I can tell you this. Um, to put it in perspective for the listeners, um, in ancient times, the you know Hebrew scribes and others like them um, to when they were trying to describe uh, prophetic events, they wrote in a type of script called apocalyptic script. Yep. And yeah, and with a apocalyptic script, they would use uh, imagery um, to describe things that were going to happen in the future. For example, a beast rising out of the sea would be a nation coming to power, and then a a horn would be a kingdom rising uh, out of that nation, and then a crown would be a king. And so um, when you when you read Revelation, that's exactly what it's talking about. Um, that portion of it is talking about um, kingdoms, kings, rulers, and nations. And so it's talking about what they're going to be um, used for, uh, who they're going to be led by, uh, talking about, you know, that they were given power by the dragon. Um, you know, the red dragon gives the seven-headed dragon his power and his throne on earth. And, you know, we, it's it's controversial. It's hard to swallow. But um, the Bible is pretty um, clear about where that is and where that began. Well, when we speak on Freemason, that's a pretty broad subject, and a lot of people, whenever you say the word Freemason, they assume Illuminati, and all Freemasons are these people trying to deceive and this and that. I come from, uh, I guess I should say, a long line of freedom fighter Freemasons, which use the knowledge for a good thing and not to deceive. And I kind of try to draw that line for people that not all Freemasons are these people that are deceiving and basically running humanity into the ground. It's not like that. There's a lot of Freemasons, actually, that are in it for the uh, banker and business uh, relations. They can make more money. They have no clue about the symbology. And, and yeah, symbology there's some very positive them. Masons out there. They are oh, yeah, of course. all guys for actually what's going on behind the scenes, the public masters. Exactly. I was that be uh, I, I uh, have to say uh-huh. that since, since Freemasons was brought up. Oh, I was just wondering how we got on the, that topic. Uh, you said uh, Freemasons. No, I didn't. No, I, I didn't even mention them. No. Oh, I, I could have sworn that we uh, said that. <laughs> no, I, I said, I don't, I'm dead serious. I didn't mention that, that phrase. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear him mention it either, but maybe maybe your phone maybe got clicked. I, well, maybe I, you said something that referred because you were talking about the kings and uh and uh, the leaders of rising the power. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I heard something different here. No, I, I uh, never mentioned. No problem. But now, but now, since um, um, th- there's a lot to be said about that. I mean, yeah, there are many people um that are involved that have no idea. Um, but then you know, um, the agenda is there, 
And, you know, I, I, I leave that particular um, I leave that particular subject up to the the person who's on the quest. They they yeah. they must uncover the stones, and you know, I can't you know you can't give it all out. You know, um, certain things that no, certain things I just you know, huh? We just plant the seeds on this show. It's up to the person yeah. to do their own research and to either uh, let it wilt and die or to let it grow a flower and bloom. So, but I, I will say this though. Um, you know, we all know what the basis of it is. It's the building blocks of civilization, infrastructure, economy, stuff like that. And before, in the Garden of Eden, there was no need for that. There was none of that. There was no capitalism. There was no economy. There was no uh, infrastructure. There was none of that. It was just, you know, man living in harmony with nature and man receiving from nature what he he needed to 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 thrive, which was, you know, food, shelter, and in air, basically, and, you know, that's what trees provided us. They provided us, you know, shelter, they provided us with food, and they release oxygen and breathe in carbon dioxide, and, you know, we vice versa. So that's the balance that was intended. Yeah. But now what we're doing is we're cutting down nature in the name of infrastructure and economy and, you know, the building blocks of, quote, unquote, civilization. And yeah, so well, there are alternative means but these people obviously know what they're doing. They intend on uh, shutting down the planet because they know it correlates with our energies. Our energies correlate with everything on the planet. Our spirit, exactly. The planet, has exactly. Spirit, the planet has chakras just like we do, and it all comes together. When we destroy our planet, they know it makes us weaker in a sense, not weaker, period, but in a sense. It kind of mm-hmm. works the same way with us. We got a lot of people. Right. Here. There are alternatives to that. Now, I, I want to say, quote, unquote, this is just my point of view on this subject, but is when it comes to cutting down trees and forests and natural things, there's always the alternative of industrial hemp, which can be used for all of these things. And we exactly. Can, we can plant it ourselves and, and be self-sustaining, and it's a weed. It grows anywhere, you know, but they don't want to look that way about it. Right, I mean, right. Because there's a fine, thin line between use and abuse. Obviously, some people would abuse that, and then some people would use that for, for a good thing. So I just had to spit that out there, my personal point of view. P knows how I am. <laughs> yeah. Right on, right on. But, but uh, you know, along with that, if you look at it like this, uh, we mentioned the Tower of Babel and uh, what the modern-day Tower of Babel is in the Internet. Um, and we, we know that the fallen angels were cast down to the earth, and so naturally they're going to use mankind to try to return to heaven, as the Bible talks about, using the tower using the tower to do so. Now, the tower, I've, I've read a little bit of, about it, um, you know, some um, dissertations on it, uh, what it looked like and stuff like that. Um, if, if this was an actual tower, which I, you know, have no reason to, to, to doubt that it was, um, then there had there had to be some knowledge. There had to be some knowledge of building blocks and in, in infrastructure and how to do things. There had to be some knowledge that was passed down to man. Man didn't just get this by himself. So who did he get it from? He got it from the fallen angels. And um, so so you know the knowledge is still being passed on. It's the knowledge of this society. And it's being passed on. Um, you know, the ruler of this earth, of this world, is you know who? He's the ruler of it. So um, God is the owner, but he's the ruler for a short time. And, uh, another yeah. comment here is there's, I don't know if people have ever delved into the book, the Urantra book. I don't promote this book at all. But it's right. an interesting Careful. point of view of people. And it's actually sort of a religion that people actually follow this structure of belief and I, like I said I don't condone it I just I do my research on everything I can because without one end of the spectrum of knowledge you can't have the other and you can't know fully what you're talking about without both spectrums so well, well you know what along with that and that that's a good uh, a, a good uh, point you put out you know that um, you know you don't you don't promote it but um, I would encourage everyone um, in their quest to make sure that they have a strong foundation um, oh, yeah. You know, in my view, a strong foundation of the word because, you know, the Bible, because that, that gives you a basis um, so that you don't drift too far out. You'll know how to filter things mm-hmm. through. You'll know how to have that discerning spirit um, because, you know, there's a lot of deceptive philosophy out there. And, um, and so 
Um, but but like I said, you know, it's 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 like this. When you're when you're going on that quest, I mean, you're gonna have to dig, and you're gonna have to get dirty. Um, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, you can stay on the milk and still be saved. You can stay on the milk and be saved, but it'll be a struggle because you'll be uh, vulnerable to being deceived. So yeah. in order to to build that um that protective covering around you, you're gonna have to get your hands dirty so that you can be able to see through the deception. And, uh, um, when, on, on the topic of the Tower of Babel, I, I, I've really studied into that. In, uh, if I'm correct, wasn't that during the time of the, del, the deluge? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, basically, and, and, uh, yeah, yes, go ahead. During the, great, during the Great Flood. And mm-hmm. I, I think one of the terminologies I read was that Either the, it had to do with the Tower of Babel. I'm just trying to find the, the truth behind it, but it said something that in the effect that when the Creator brought the uh, the deluge or the flood, he also uh, what he what it states. I think he confused the language. Yes. That's why it was called. That's why it was called. That's that's why it was called Babel, yep. because they began to speak in different languages and they and they didn't even understand each other. Um, but now let me mention something so, about that. So if I'm correct, that was during the time of the uh, the, the building of the Tower of Babel. Yeah, that was in the early uh, p- early portion of the Book of Genesis. Great, and, great. Uh, okay, I'm on it. I'm on it then. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. It, it, it's so fascinating. There's so much just in that whole era of the Tower of Babel. Could, could you maybe yes. expound on what was going on during the time? What created the this tower to be uh, taken down and whatnot. Well, 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 it's it's like this. It's you know God had His intent for the for the for the um, for the earth. He had His intent. He had um, man, and and He created him in a perfect relationship with him, and it was corrupted. And so when it was corrupted, um, you know Lucifer and his angels, his rebel angels, uh, began their assault on um, you know on heaven. And yeah. of course, you know, of course they, they lost, but, um, you know, what they're trying to do is, you know, bring mankind and use mankind to do their bidding on earth so that they can launch an attack uh, to heaven. And so, you know, that's where the, the Tower of Babel came in at. Uh, they were trying to regain their place, and that's why it was also, a tower. And yeah, then, also been and, seen in more than just the Nebuchadnezzar story, but also on Jacob's Ladder, he saw the angels. It's yes, it's now, descending. Mm-hmm. That's right. And you know so what? You, so, that, so you think that that ladder was the Tower of Babel? No. I think that ladder is somewhat of a space bridge. I think it's something like... It's a something, gateway or a, like a yes, portal? Yes. That's what I think it is. And uh, does, it, does it actually mention the area that occurred? Because I'm pretty sure if, if people did the, the, the proper testing... They could figure out if there is some type of interdimensional portal there. Well, you talking about the uh, the Tower of Babel? Where was it? No, the um, the actual uh, the actual place that uh, when you saw the, the angels the, descending. Yes, in the, the Jacob's, Jacob's ladder. ladder. Well, does, we, does it we actually def- refer to where it it, it actually occurred? Uh, not in my recollection, but I mean, it, it can. It can do you know, I've done Mel? A little bit of research in, well, I've done a little bit of research into it, and I've found several different things. Uh, one avenue of research um, took me to a place of, it was describing the chakras. And when you climb the ladder of your chakras, oh, you know, then, okay. like, like Pete talks about the light beings in the Merkaba flying around in their yes. light ship. You see what I'm saying? It, it yeah. Kind mm-hmm. of, um, Gives or takes you to that point. But you would you point. would have to say through your research that it, it would have to have been Jerusalem. Well, um, it, it would be your temple, your body, because you would be climbing your chakras. There was a certain amount of runs in the ladder, and mm-hmm. whenever the angels ascended and descended, you would climb the chakras in your body. Then you would mm-hmm. be able to ascend into the heavens. Uh, there we go. Be, okay, it's just yeah, another well, tale you, of ascension then. That's just right. an avenue that I that I I did some research into, and that's one avenue that it took me down. And well, that so helped me a lot. That helped me a lot. So it's so a good looking out on that. Well, I'm not but, going to uh, you, the truth. You, you, you know what? Way. Go ahead. What, what was that, people? No, I was going to say, um, you know, I would encourage um, all, uh, you know, as they they listen to us and they 
they gain the knowledge. I, I would encourage all to to try not to um, delve into. This is just my 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 encouragement, um, not to delve into uh, too much of the the magic and the uh, kabbalistic or occultic, um, you know, areas of of life because what it does is it it opens you up because. You know, this is what happened in the Garden of Eden. Um, this is the secret knowledge. This is the knowledge of good and evil. This is the knowledge that God didn't want us to know about because it exposes us. It opens it opens us up. It opens so you're us not up really feeling the, the chakras and uh, things in that. Oh no, I, I I mean I know about I know about the chakras and I, I agree with uh, Mel. No, what I'm what I'm saying is, um, you know, some people may listen and say, oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get into transcendental med- meditation and I'm going to just try to, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. beca- become become my own become my own little god. And, yeah. and yeah. What, 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 what I'm encouraging them. We get to this section with a lot of our guests that we have on the show, and that's the point of the fact that if you don't know what you're doing, channeling can be a bad thing and stuff like mm-hmm. that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You open yourself up to things like that. You never know what you're going to get, what kind of spirit mm-hmm. is going to try and reach out and touch you or you're going to try and reach out and touch. I suggest, mm-hmm. just my personal point of view or perspective, you follow that piece of the creator spirit, that piece of God that's within you, inside that temple right there, because that one's not mm-hmm. going to lead you wrong. But another spirit, that's right. you never know what they're going to do, what they're going to tell you, how they're going to deceive you. They may lead you down the right path, but they might not. They may want something from you in return, like the genie. So that's at the that's a disclaimer, basically stating that Kabbalah can be good and it can be bad if it's used yeah. in the wrong context. Well, you have right. To it's very, it's a, they, a lot of people that get on the channel and thing, you know, and then they end up they, yeah. they get all screwed around and they don't know what they're doing because somebody exactly. teaches them two thousand dollars a class. You can do that exactly. You got to and, be and careful. The, and the an important thing is that they they must um, they must understand why those things were put into practice in the beginning. Um, the reason why God used um, the magic of the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant and, 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 and the different miracles that he did back in, in the Old Testament was so that they would know that he is God Almighty because you had you know fallen angels around saying, I'm a God, I'm a God, I'm a God. And so God had to actually show that, hey, look, I am Almighty. He, he said it so many times in Isaiah and so many times throughout the Old Testament, that, look, I am the one true God. Yeah, what's so profound about that is the true creator spirit, God, whatever label, if you decide to label this, does not even have to tell you this. If there is an entity telling you that, 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 that I am God, obviously that entity was created by God or the true creator spirit because he wouldn't have to tell you that. When you're in the presence of the true creator God, it's a, it would be a feeling that you have. It, it wouldn't have to, it, you shouldn't have to be told, in other words. There's no language, I don't think, that takes place. It's the feeling. And if something tells you that it's God, it's not the true creator spirit. It was created also, just like you were created. Well, I, I can I can tell you, I can share from, um, you know, my, my perspective is like, um, Right now, if someone were to come up to me and say, or if something were to come to me and say, I'm God, I wouldn't believe it. Because from what I understand yeah. about the word, um, he doesn't come to you like that. Um, yeah. Because, uh, uh, you know, an angel, a fallen angel can come to you like that, you see. But what was happening yeah. is, but what was happening is, in the Old Testament, you had the fallen angels going around saying that, I'm God. Yeah. And so, so now God had, had to actually come down and show his glory and establish that he was the almighty he had to actually reestablish that and so you know and then with uh when when jesus came um you know he was trying to 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 establish the kingdom and he was doing miracles again but those miracles were only so that people would believe they would not believe if he didn't do a miracle and you know there's there's a scripture in corinthians that says that when that which is perfect comes all the imperfect disappears. And over and over again in the Word, it says that my Word is perfect. My Word is perfect. That's what he's saying. So now that you have the Bible, you have the Word, you don't need to hear someone say, thus saith the Lord, go to, you know, blah, blah, blah. You don't need to do that. You don't even need to listen to it because they could be lying. 
Um, the, when you read the Bible, it tells you everything you need to know, past, present, and future. Um, and so that's what I would encourage people to do, to just um, those who are Christians to to uh, stick to the word and, and, and branch out, definitely branch out. Um, you know, learn about the Kabbalah, of course. Um, learn about, you know, the different um, levels of prayer. And um, but just use that, that that the Bible as a basis, as a guide, because it, it's it contains everything. So you're referring to the Old and the New Testaments. You refer to the Bible. Yeah, I'm talking about the Old and the New, and and that's okay. the thing. You know, it's it's I, I think um, if people could just get off of the religious um, uh, perspective of the Bible and just see it as wow, that's history then they'll be more apt to listen and read more. But well, when they just when they just listen to the message, they the message is what's really important. It's not right. really the person that's speaking it, it's the, the message and the story. That's what they're trying to point to. And a lot mm-hmm. of people don't they miss that. They want to dress up nice and go to church and show off they say, Right, oh, exactly. And after they get out of <laughs> church they you know, they go get their forty or they go eat a whole bunch of food and don't do nothing the rest of the day. You know, and That's they right. give all their money to the donation. So uh, not a lot, not all of them, but a lot of them, they build these million and million dollar churches when they could actually be taken that way and, and housing the poor, poor or feeding the poor, clothing the poor, actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. That's why I say that a priest is not closer to God than you are. There's some deception going there. The message is what's really important. Not what the right. person is telling you is important. It's the message that's important. And you know what? You the you you are you use the name uh, Melchizedek and uh I would like to tell the people that um that's a very, very profound name because, you know, um the Melchizedek is a line of uh of priests um that were, you know, used in the Bible and uh the Bible talks about how Jesus was the last Melchizedek and how we don't need a priest anymore. We don't need someone to intercede for for us anymore. We don't need for someone to say, bless me, you know, or talk to God for me. We have a direct yeah. line to God now. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. yeah. that's they the made important the connection. Fact. Yeah. Wow. I, I use the title. I've spit it many times before. There's actually, I've gotten, you know, a lot of hate mail and stuff because of it, if you will. But, no, it's just a moniker. I mean, I understand. I, but some I, people, I, yeah, I some people it. take it too seriously. Yeah, well, I use it because it kind of describes me, you know, that's, that's what I do for people, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. if people don't like it, then they don't like it, and it's not up to me to to please everybody. I try to help, but that's all I can do is try. Like you said, hey, it's the message, and, you, you know, you have a good message, and that's what's important. But um, I'd like to ask you a question, uh, guys, um, yeah. see if you guys can, can get it. Um what what's 555 feet high and 111 feet deep? And if you can get it, this will tell you exactly what what the agenda is. It, it'll be clear. What was the depth again? You said 555 feet high and 111 feet deep. Hmm, that is a question right there. Yeah, and it's. It's uh, it's in the United States somewhere. Ooh, that uh, that one got me. Uh... It's, it's, it's a it's it's a well known place or or um uh, icon or again? huh? Set those dimensions just one more time. Five hundred and fifty five. Five hundred and fifty five feet high. And 111 feet deep. Mm, Are you gonna Google it? Huh? I'm a, <laughs> I was about to. I'm a little. I'm a little astounded on that one. Um, <laughs> Black Angel said the Stone Mountain. No, this is a man-made object. Wow. An 1100. Would you say a? One hundred and eleven feet deep. One hundred and eleven feet deep. And five hundred and fifty five feet high. Sounds like a um a naval ship. Oh no, it's a fixed object. 
It's, it's sad. Uh oh. Well, let's let's take this caller and see if they might know. Five eight zero. You're on the air Hi. today. Uh, could you give us your name and where you're coming from? Uh, this is Stacy Hill. I'm the president and founder of SWOGC, Southwest Oklahoma Ghost Chasers, and I'm calling from Oklahoma. And to change the subject, I have a question regarding 2012. I've seen that posted up there on show description and everything. Is that going mm-hmm. by the Mayan calendar? Yes. On the date 2012? Uh-huh. Well, okay. there's, there's a few um, different depictions of 2012, if you really look into it, besides the Mayans. So oh, yeah, yeah, the uh, Egyptians, yeah, the Chinese. Yes, yes. Yeah, the Hopi Indians. Yep, there we go. Okay, because the calendar we go by is a few years off. I was watching a deal on the History Channel about that, and I I figured it up. I think it would put us at, like, 2009. It would actually be our 2012 going by the calendar we use today. Uh, you know, I'm a medium and everything, and I deal with a lot of mediums, and not to say that... All mediums are pagans, but a lot of the pagans are, you know, it's it's coming up that, you know, everything's going to end probably in the next year, that civilization as we know it is going to come to an end. Well, it God bless end. those pagans. Year, and it's not 2012. You know, there's well, all different kinds of ways it can be taken. Uh, 2012 can be. Uh, I mean, it could be a spiritual change within everybody. It, it could be an earth change. That's right. It could be. It could be numerology also. Well, you know, there's a map called out there. It's called the Earth Change Map, and it shows how you know they just had a massive earthquake on the Mississippi Valley River, and it shows that east coast and the Mississippi spreading out. And here they were talking about possibly another major earthquake, you know, well, and you a lot of psychics, know. I know that. Well, 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 one if of I, if the I, if biggest uh, fault lines in the world is right here. It runs through Kentucky and the East Coast, and I can't even remember the last time it went off. Like, it hasn't gone off for hundreds of years, maybe thousands. Right. I like the San Andreas uh, that goes off every couple of years or whatever. But it is, right. uh, it's not the big, biggest. It's, it's maybe the second biggest. It's uh, one of the, the biggest in the world, and it hasn't gone off yet. Well, you know, I live in Oklahoma, and, and we've got – I'm probably about 30 minutes from the oldest mountain range in North America. And we have a fault line. And we've actually had earthquakes here. And, you know, <laughs> we've, we've all been on edge. You know, you think Oklahoma, you don't think earthquakes. And, yeah. uh, you know, we've been on Somebody edge. I know it. I've been losing a lot of sleep because I feel something's coming. And well, Sifu, um, what's, your, what, what's your take on the 2012? Because we definitely wanted to get into that with you. Okay. I, I think. Um, uh, well, what I. What, what, huh? Hello? What's that? No, hold on one you, second. Uh, hold okay. on one second. Let him get this out real quick. Okay. No, well, you have a. Um, you have a, a, a group of, uh, of um, how can I say it, uh, cultures that have have, have a, a take on this. Like, you know, you have the Mayans, you have the Hopis, you have the uh, Egyptians, you have the Chinese. Yeah. Um, the Egyptians say that um, it's the return of Osiris. It's the return of the, the snake god. Um, and, you know, so if that if that were the case, and, and you know, we've already went, went into the implications of the snake, the dragon, um, Lucifer, um, the devil, all of that stuff. And we know that there's supposed to be an end-time deception. Um, there's an end-time deception that's going to go on where, you know, the devil is going to going to make us think it's the end of the world. And then he's going to rise up and make it all better. And that's the Antichrist. So so right. it, it's, a, it's, a possibility. it's a It's a possibility that um it 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 may not have anything to do with God. It may have some you know, all to do with, you know, something that he's doing. He's supposed to be released um after a thousand years. So Look could this be this, uh, prison. Well, you know, yeah. we we really don't know but due to the fact that the calendars have been changed and, you know, they added uh July and August due to Julius and Augustus Caesar. 
and everything. Yeah. You know, those were really not calendars. And at one time they went on a 13-month calendar, and now we go on a 12-month calendar. And so, you know, we really don't know. But, yeah, you know, but what's I, your I name again, caller? If you huh? think about it. It's what's your name again, caller? Stacy Hill. Stacey. I was with oh. Oklahoma Ghost Chasers. Okay, okay, Stacy. Um, yeah, you, your date you put out there is pretty on because um, we also have to remember that the Mayan calendar was only 360 days, so you would have right. to minus a lot of uh, days off the 365 we currently live by in order to get the correct date. And I've heard dates of 2006. So um, right. you, you're 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 pretty much on the on the line there. Um, did you get that from your intuitive nature, or where did you pick no, that number I, up? I I I stay a lot on the Learning Channel and the History Channel, mm, and when okay. they show things like that, I you know I'm definitely watching that, and you know I I I stay up on stuff like that. I like to um, read I, about that, you know. And like I said, there's a world change map, and I don't remember the website. And it shows, you know, a major earthquake in the Mississippi Valley down the river, and it spreads the Mississippi even, yeah. like, triple the width. And I, California, I, Arizona becomes oceanfront property and everything else. I and do have some to major psychics have seen this. Yeah, I, I do have to say something about these channels that people watch on TV and what they do uh -huh. to yep, and yep, the knowledge. Yep. Uh, Read my mind. All the newspapers, all the TV channels, all the radio stations are owned, They're owned by, by the CFR, the Council on Foreign Relations. They dictate to the right. entire world what they want them to know. Disclaimer, so disclaimer. Disclaimer, so you disclaimer, have to, disclaimer. You have to of, pick out disclaimer, the disclaimer. Disclaimer, 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 disclaimer. None of the opinions and views. There, there right. are some truths, but you right. have to pick out the truths because they'll leave a lot of stuff out or they'll throw something else in. And another point is there's a realization going on that we can use our energies, our vibrations, our spirits that people are coming to a sense of to actually shape your life. And it, it, the powers that be know this is happening, and if they put this negative stuff in your face all the time, on the news, on on the news in the newspapers, they essentially control what you they're trying to anyway by their propaganda. How oh, the bingo! Turn I mean, out. so you and, and this is hey, you know what? Negative. Hey, no, so no, 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 this is right. Hey, this is what I talk uh -huh. about in my book. I talk about positive and godly knowledge. You know, yes, you know, yes. re you retraining the mind so that you can you know retrain your feelings and then your feelings. You 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 produce the right actions in your life, yes. and it, it's oh, a process. That's, that's that's true. You are absolutely positive about that. I mean, negativity breeds negativity, yeah. positive breeds positive. You're absolutely and right. You can put it in terms of karma. You can put it in terms of knowledge. You can put it in terms of good and evil, the yin yang. However, you want to correlate it, it can be put in those terms. Because what you put in is what you get out. These indeed you know this. And they're trying to control the future. We have to open people's minds. We have to plant these seeds, you know. Well, so Stacy, we being a medium, um, I'm sure you use your inner tuition all the time. So that's that, uh, that's what we I advocate try to block here. It due to the fact that I'm an empath, and you know, I I pick up a lot of people's emotions and feelings, so I try to block ah, okay. it. Okay. But I okay. I do use it when we, we do investigations sometimes. Uh, I'm not the. I'm being the president and founder. I'm not the lead investigator. I actually have a psychic that is dead on. I've tested her. She's mm. been tested by other pre people. Matter of fact, uh, as soon as we get the money, me and her is going out to Mexico to do the test to become certified. Uh, and wow. Everything. Cool. So, we actually had a uh, guest on the show, Stephen Harefield, that was certified with the ARE, and that's a. Uh, pretty good yeah. association to be certified with, too. Um, I, I hate to really kind of go back off subject. I love the people when, when they call in with these questions and stuff and, and also this positive knowledge and, and other people's points of view. 
but Definitely. I'm so interested in the question that Sifu <laughs> had asked. And I is it the Washington Monument? I just have to know the answer. To that. So, some, somebody type it in. Yes, it's the Washington Monument. The Washington mm-hmm. Monument. Mm-hmm. Now, 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 here's 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 the clincher. Yeah. Yeah. Aha. Aha. Now, now. <laughs> do, now, now, do the math. Yeah. Do the math. Five hundred fifty-five plus. Or one hundred times. No, plus one hundred and eleven. Six hundred and sixty-six. Yeah. Aha. Oh, six six six. Yes. Wow. Oh my do you God. Do you think that's a coincidence? No, there isn't any coincidences. So. <laughs> oh man. Yes, sir. Is, is there any way we could tie the other monuments around there into this, like the obelisk and things like that? Well, I'm sure. I haven't really gone that deep, but when that when that came to me, um, I just I had to let stop and let it marinate, as I usually do when I get those <laughs> profound things. Well, when wow. you put the numbers, it made me think a whole lot, and I was coming up with the six six six, but I couldn't think of what it was and, and where it was. Yeah, there, there was a, a, another person that actually thought of that answer. A very smart individual. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, you have any, anything more on the lines of that, uh, Sifu? Um, uh, well, I'm sure there's uh-huh. plenty more out there. Yeah, there, there's so much, man. I, I you know, I, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of hesitant whenever we get on 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 that particular in that particular area. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a very it. large, very large and powerful group that runs that. So. Yes, you we, know, we definitely but, uh, don't want to be uh, messing with them guys. So um, yeah, we got to play. Um, you know, uh, subscribe to the the pagan religion, and that's fine. That's that's their choice, you know. But um, the pagans used to call the devil Old Nick. Well, hmm. what do we call what do we call Santa? Old Nicholas, jolly old Saint Nick. And so, it, it that could be a coincidence, but maybe not. And it goes a little further. Um, in Scandinavia, there was a uh, like a, uh, a ritual um, with the Scandinavians in which they would build an altar and they would put a shim on top of their roof. Now, this is you know years before America. Um, you know they they put a shim. We call it today a chimney. And this so actually years before Christianity too. If you look at uh-huh. the word holiday, it's, you can break it down into a holy day. And ah yes. Christian holidays actually go a lot further back than. Uh, exactly, exactly. And these and are really see, just uh, pagan uh, holidays, correct? Right, and this is where, if you if you look in the Old Testament, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, controversy about the Old Testament and why God would say, "Do not intermingle, do not intermarry, do not take their gods, uh, don't you know intermingle with the pagans and stuff like that." Um, there's a reason for it, and and it's it's. You know, if people are willing to embrace the, the truth or not, that that's the bottom line. The truth, it hurts, is difficult to embrace, but the truth is the truth. And so, well, back on topic, uh, as far as the uh, the chim, you know, you, they would they would uh, have a uh, uh, a sacrifice, you know, a goat or whatever, and they would sacrifice to a god that rode through the air on a sled, pulled by pulled by two goats named Nasher and Crasher. Hmm. Prancer, dancer, dasher, donner. Does that sound familiar? Wow. Wow. So okay. So yes. So yes. So now it, it starts to come into focus a little bit more. And then when you consider who was riding on the the sled, it was the god Thor. Now, when I was young, um, Thor was a superhero with the super friends. Now yeah. further study shows that Thor was in league with the devil himself. And so now if you also look further, you'll see that Thor is also the god of the Vikings. And he wore the horns, and they rode in what? Dragon ships. Yeah. Who's the dragon? You know? And so wow. all of this, yeah, all of this, uh, so, so, you know, so comes. So basically you are look, we're pointing to, um, <coughs> oh, excuse me, uh, that these uh, ancient Scandinavians were, were truly – uh, pagan idols, and, and they, they really praise these things. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
I mean, they, wow, they really... I did not they, know that. I thought they were just almost non-denomination. Well, uh, I, I guess I could start off by saying, um, you know, I, I kind of lean toward um, hanging on to, you know, the Bible and the Word, um, not for religious purposes, um, but because of what I see uh, prophetically, uh, historically, civilization-wise, people, places, and events. Um, it's undeniable. Yeah. And so it's it's a, it's my main reference guide. But as far as the myths, um, I like to start by saying uh, when when we think of the word myth, uh, most people uh, you know turn off their brains. You don't really research it any further because myth means lie or myth myth means fairy tale, uh, like yeah. I think I mentioned before. And um, there's a a word uh, mythos, which um, is synonymous with with history. It doesn't mean lie. And so, um, you know, the more people uh, begin to become aware, the more they're going to start seeing these things uh, on television and commercials everywhere. They're just going to start seeing it. And um, one of one of the major ways that uh, you can see it is if you were to peel back the uh, the layers of uh, our holidays. Um, I'm pretty sure you you know many people out there have wondered about the origin of some of the things um like santa claus you know um well, well that sounds like a perfect one to start off with um uh i i know a few things and to be honest i i do not advocate santa claus or or teach that within my own family so uh, uh what, what what's your what's your thinking and, and ideas on that one well, I, I tell you, um, you know, if if you mention Santa as uh, anything other than a jolly, uh, benevolent, uh, chubby man, um, you know, it, it's going to cause a lot of uh, a lot of issues with a lot of people. Yeah. And um, you know, a lot of people are passionate about that. And I mentioned this in my book about how um, that's what they want. They want to steal your passions. And so, when you look at um, when you look at uh, Santa, if you scramble the, the the letters Santa, you get Satan. Now that could yeah. be coincidental. You could say that's coincidental, or uh, you could also say it's co- coincidental that uh, you know he's wearing a red suit. That's coincidental. Um, then we all know there's no coincidences. So exactly, but it it, it gets <laughs> it gets it, it gets worse. It gets worse. Um, now, as far as uh, his little helpers. If you look up uh, the word elf, uh, you get mm-hmm. mischievous, mischievous creature. So now, what, why, why does Santa need mischievous creatures to help him build toys for little kids? And so, if you look a little further, um, I know you know there are many people that uh, Hello. Is everybody still there? I'm here. Phone just kind of went dead for a second. I didn't hear nothing, but I still heard heard the music. So. Okay. Uh, do, is Sifu still on? I'm not sure. I'm not hearing him. Oh hey, we gotta man. We got to this disclaimer, man. We need to go ahead and do that, bro. Yes. One second. Let me do that right quick. Disclaimer. 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 None of the opinions and views expressed. By the people on the air tonight are the expressions and views of Blog Talk Radio. Okay, I saw Sifu Harris. He was back on, but I think he hung back up. Let's see if we can get him back on again. Disclaimer, disclaimer. None of the opinions and views expressed by the people on the air tonight are the expressions and views of Hello. Gary. Are Hello. You, uh, did, so did your phone cut out on you? Um, I'm sure yeah, it probably out. did. How's the okay. sound coming through? It's coming it's, through it's good now. And clear, loud and clear. Okay. Actually, if okay. you could turn it down maybe one notch, that would be perfect. Okay, let me just move my mic here. I got a, a boom mic here. How's that? You, you sound nice. Okay, perfect. Um, okay. As Melchizedek just requested that we play the disclaimer. Um, okay. There was a show that recently just got cut off again. Basically, um, was uh, terminated. 
Wow. Uh, due to um, due to the subject matters they're speaking upon, of course, it was um, Hollywood Tony P show, Mel. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. And what, and, uh, what was he talking about? Uh, he was basically talking about the nine one one conspiracies and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And well, obviously, disclaimer, disclaimer. None of the opinions and views expressed by the people on the air tonight are the expressions and views of Blog Talk Radio. And this okay, is basically yes, this is basically the the third uh, the third person I know of who's got their show taken from them. Yeah, and wow. what, what, yeah, and what happens? They basically just totally delete you from the system, everything. So if you wow. have uh, if you have archives of shows, I'm pretty sure they're all gone. And um, this guy had a real great show. You know, I, I'm I, just to put it out there for Blog Talk Radio. I, I'm not advocating what what they were speaking of that night. And obviously, the show isn't about that type of controversy. It's about enlightenment, but. Uh, they were just speaking their mind, and their shows end up got, uh, being cut off completely. That's right. His story. That's right. Um, yes, I, I'd definitely like to tackle some more of these uh, these fairy tales and myths we were talking about earlier. Definitely. Yeah. No, um, the, the 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 next one is uh, Halloween. Um, I, I mean, many of us have uh, have uh, I'm pretty sure delved into some studies about Halloween. Yeah. Um, you know, All Hallows Eve. And, and stuff like that. Um, in the Latin, there, there's, uh, take that as the Day of the Dead, of course, and celebrate that's right. it. Uh huh. Like it's Christmas, really. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, now, there, that, there, that's that's a, a real strange factor I see. Um, what, what's your opinion on that? People really s- going forth and celebrating the dead. Rather well, I tell you, I tell you what. Mm hmm. No, I tell you what. As far as the uh, the celebration of the dead, that that one thing is is um, I think that one's the most easily to be one that's not as easily seen is the dressing up of you know different things like vampires, witches, demons, you know, you name it. The dressing up yeah. of for fun, all in the name of fun. But now if people would really realize um, that truth is stranger than fiction, that there were actually real vampires, that there were actually, you know, there are, are actually real demons, and, you know, of course, witches, and definitely werewolves, that they actually did exist. And and if people would really realize what those things mean um, in the occult, or what those things mean on the dark side, I don't think they'll send their kids out dressed like that. I don't think they will take part in it. Um, well, now you know some people. Well, go ahead. I was just gonna. I just had a comment on the the holidays that we're speaking about here, and uh, there's a purpose for the holidays and why these occult figures, of powers that be, or whatever, promote these holidays, and it's uh, for mm-hmm. the energies that they use that they feed on for the people. And a lot of the people say, well, there mm-hmm. are a lot of people that give positive energy into the holidays. Yeah, but they don't think about the negative aspects like Christmas. People get upset when they don't get what they want. There's a lot of negative energy going on in Christmas. And a lot that's of right. Don't show it, but the energy is there. The energy never lies. That's what they oh, that's are, right. This energy. That's right. And uh, you know, along with that, this is why you know in my book again, I, I mentioned you know overcoming mental and spiritual manipulation through self mastery under the will of God, mm-hmm. uh, because we are being manipulated and uh, we are being uh, fed upon. And uh, you know, like like he just said, they um, they want to inspire you, but with the wrong things, you know, and, and and therefore they can control your inspirations. Well, they were just biking pirates. I, I didn't well, know that they actually had beliefs like that. Um, respectfully no. for what we're talking about and what you're saying, mm-hmm. Odin was the god and Thor was the son of Odin. Oh, mm-hmm. kind of okay. Similar to um, uh, the Jesus and God story. You know, people, Christians, they say you know, Jesus was the son of God. Thor was the son of Odin. Just out of my right. research, that's what I've gotten. Mm-hmm. Well, no, that's, that's true. Odin, exactly right. Isn't Odin uh, part of Greek mythology mm-hmm. also? Yeah, 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 but now, but, but let me let me on that. 
Poseidon. Well, well, was in, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. okay. And uh, Zeus was in uh, Roman. There we now, go. If, okay. If I if I may add a little something about the uh, the um, the Odin Thor thing, um, yeah. that, that's exactly right. But now, if you um, you know, the further you check and, and start um, cross referencing, you'll see there's a connection between Thor and the devil. And uh, this is why you know the horns and the Vikings had the horns, and then they rode around in the dragon ships. Um, there's a connection. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah, and so this is, this is honestly so, I slept on, guys. So um, I'm I'm really fascinated right now. Please keep going on. No, and there, there there's more um, as far as um, you know um, you know the little kids. This is this is what the focus is. The focus is on little kids. Um, this is why in the word, you know, uh, Jesus says you must become as little kids. There's a reason for that. And, um, you know, the, the devil counterfeits everything that God has ever done. Um, so if God has a son, then, of course, you know, you're going to see the same type of similarities uh, with, you know, demigods having sons and um, claiming to be benevolent and, you know, requiring worship and sacrifice and all this stuff. Go ahead. What are you going to say? all over the world in a lot of cultures. Oh, yes. Uh, esoteric mm-hmm. cultures, the same type of story with the same type of stuff going on in reference the to same uh, deities the dragon, and... if, you, if you want to call them reptilians. And we can get real deep into that subject if you really want to. I oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh. I would say we I would say hey, listen. It there. Hey, listen. Hey, hey, you know what? Um, I, I like the, the format, and, um, you know, I, I've uh, structured myself in, in accordance to the format. So, I, I'm ready. Once we get to that that segment, boy, we we can really take off with that. Um, that I, I, uh, yeah, but um, I, I like to um, you know, branch off into some more of the uh, the holidays. Um, oh yeah. You know, as uh, as Mel, as Mel called it, holy days. That's that's so accurate. Um, well, you can break but, out a uh, lot of words like that, man. and it's, it's it's strange how the our system of speech is set up with certain words and. Uh, you can break down into certain things like history, you know, his story. But yeah, mm-hmm. That's right. You-